Now, slight change of subject for now because um, uh, LTNs, we've talked about them in so many, so many different contexts of, uh, 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 in the past, but this, I think, is really um, a key issue that we haven't talked enough about. And it's female uh, Uber passengers um, have alerted the council, I think it's Fulham Council in London, to what is a, a frankly a very concerning issue of being compelled because of an LTN to walk home alone all night, all during the night, due to drivers refusing to enter a contentious low traffic neighbourhood. Um, and, and this was implemented a year ago in this particular case. It was in the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. Uh, and the LTN is near Wandsworth Bridge, uh, which of course is, is in West London. And uh, essentially, the South Fulham LTN entails uh, that drivers from outside the borough face fines. We know that. If they disregard no entry signs that restrict roads to through traffic. And that's the rub here uh, of what's actually happening. And it is. You think about it, you drop a woman off nowhere near her home. We're seeing an increase in violence against women. Uh, how can this be a good thing? And, and actually, of all the criticisms, and there's many of the LTNs, um, I think that is very valid. Now, it's got to be said, in fairness, that black cabs and local minicabs are exempt from the charges. But, you know, Uber, it's like part of our lives now, whether you like it or not. People are using Uber all the time. Uh, and I don't know how to phrase this, but perhaps at the end of the evening, it's not the first thing you think about is necessarily trying to find a local minicab when you can just go on your app on Uber. So either make an exemption uh, or better still get rid of the LTNs. I know someone who will have some views on this and um, he's very pleased to welcome him. Howard Cox, Reform UK London mayoral candidate. Uh, welcome. Hello, Nick. How are you? Very, very good to hear from you, uh, Howard. And I know you'll be joining us uh, in a special one hour in the not too distant future when we should cover lots of subjects. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that as well. But tell me your thoughts on this uh, flag to women's safety. Well, we all know the safest place for any person in a car, woman or male, is inside a car. But if you can't get that car close to your home, um, uh, it, it is obviously very scary. And I know I get a number of emails from or especially younger women, but, but all types of people saying because of uh, the situation where Uber drivers aren't allowed to drive into these low traffic neighbourhoods, uh, uh, if they did do their find, um, they're, they're, they're really scared, they're really worried, and it is the, this is the ones driving at night time. It is a ridiculous thing, and as you know how I feel, I'm, when I'm elected London Mayor, all LTNs will go. It's as simple as that. So, I mean, I can't find any response apart from sort of bland statements about how wonderful LTNs are. But uh, it does seem rather odd to me uh, that when safety has never been more of an issue, with the horrific yes. tax we saw in Clapham and elsewhere, that actually more is not being made of this. Is there anything you can do uh, as a candidate, and more importantly, perhaps as a, a, a well-known campaigner on, on uh, motor issues? Is there anything more we can do? Well, there is more, and that's obviously is, is to write to your local authorities, your local councils, your local MP. You know better than anyone, Nick, that that is a way through to getting, if you get a number of actually uh, a, a people It does need a number, Howard. It needs volume. Yeah. Well, as you know, I've got 1.7 million supporters across the country for Fairfield UK, and uh, and we're coming up to a budget in three weeks' time, and I they'll be writing to their MP, they'll be writing to Jeremy Hunt to try and get fuel duty uh, reduced. Or, or certainly frozen, and that and normally uh, most MPs get something like fifteen hundred to two thousand emails from supporters uh, of Fairfield UK. I think you remember those, Nick. Mm, uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, mate. <laughs> but, well, but it's, it's really bad because I used to get them, and I agreed with you all, and I was voting that way, and that's what was really annoying. I still got the letters. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yes, I apologise for that, but obviously I couldn't discriminate. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. But going back to this serious point about safety, you're absolutely right. Uh, I understand Uber are uh, trying to negotiate with Fulham Council uh, to actually get some sort of a, a, a conclusion to this process, but there are LTNs right across London. 
and we need all of the councillors. And I, I've already written to um, uh, uh, about two or three weeks ago to to uh, the uh, uh, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, to say what he's doing about this because I've been getting these emails for months and months and months. This is not a new thing. It's nice that the Telegraph have highlighted this issue, but we're, as you quite rightly say, people have got to contact their local well, council, I, their I, local I, authority. And, and hit them hard with, hey, I'm scared. Yeah, forgive me, I, I realise your main efforts are focused on London, but we have a huge audience also outside of London. And, and the reality is LTNs are, you know, they're not just London, are they? No, they're not. I mean, and it, it only benefits the people that live inside those LTNs because they're not seeing buses and, 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 and you know, all sorts of things going through. But that they, we all know, and it's happening right across the country, service vehicles, you know, emergency vehicles are being hindered getting through these, these LTNs. They can't get through past these various obstacles, all for the sake of uh, keeping, you know, cyclists happy and pedestrians happy, etc. Wide roads, cyclists can cycle at willy-nilly. They can do what they want all the way down them. But meanwhile, the driver the anti-driver policies keeps going on and on and on and that's what we got, all got to find for and my Fairfield UK hat will continue to do that. What do you think um, and, and I, in fairness I should ask you this what do you think to people who say well now hang on you can get a black cab or you can get a mini cab if you're that worried about your safety don't get in an Uber order something else. Yeah, but they, they, they are local uh, black cabs and mini cabs, etc. If you're tr if you're going to visit someone, a family member or something like that, you've got a cab, you take it through. Not, not all of those are exempt either. It is only in the locality where you can actually be exempt from paying anything like that. And you have to register for that. And that's what Uber should be doing. And I understand they are in negotiations and I don't know how far down the line they are, but I hope Uber actually win that case. Yeah, because you're, you're the fear with all of these things, it only becomes an issue if someone's attacked or... And exactly. as a result, uh, uh, so let's try and act before that. Now, look, uh, this is very unfair because I didn't give you any flagging of this and I won't be too unkind if you don't. Uh, I, 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 assuming you've seen the story uh, today about di diversity being the priority over above security when vetting candidates to join uh, the military. Uh, and I've been asking people, you know, where and when is diversity important? and why, and I'm in absolutely no doubt that whatever the merits may be of uh, diversity and inclusion policies, putting it as the lead criteria for recruitment into our armed forces is absolutely bonkers. Well, I'm Can with you on it. I'm with you on it, Nick. I'm totally with you on this sort of thing. It's ridiculous. The diversity story is, is, you know, we're seeing it right across the country in other areas, but with our military, our security, our protection, everything about that, that should be based on merit, fitness and skill level. It's nothing to do whether you actually what uh, ethnic origin or gender, all those sorts of things. It should be based on whether you can do the job right. So I'm right there with you on this one, Nick. And yet, it would be fair to say that, and, and many people are saying it actually, is that, you know, the diversity and inclusive agenda has gone too far in, in many areas of life, in pu pu public employment, in private employment, where the emphasis should be on fit for purpose, can you do the job, are you the best person for the job? Uh, how do you well, respond to that? Well, of course, uh, that should be exactly the reason why. I, I know you're quite right, you know, uh, Talk TV is a national outlet and people right across the country, but I'm looking at the cost of actually running these diversity positions in, in, the, in the greater London area. And I cannot believe I'm seeing six-figure salaries for these jobs. What the hell do they do? Well, we now we know what they do. They come up with ludicrous things like this for the army. Well, exactly that. And, and uh, you know, as I say, those sorts of positions are going to be thrown right out. It should be based on merit. Nothing to do with what position you are in life in terms of your ethnic origin or your gender. All those sorts of things are, can be taken into account afterwards and see what, whether you can do the job. Simple and as that. Do you, think there is a, do you think there is a role intervention like this can play, for example, in reducing prejudice, in ensuring that actually there's not... Uh, discrimination against candidates of colour, uh, where I think it's probably fair to say that that has exist and does exist. Well, that that should be completely. Uh, I, we should be blind to what you look like or how you act, etc. It should be whether you can do the job. And I think sometimes the people who are skilled at doing these jobs are being discriminated discriminated against. So that's some of the things that I'm seeing. I know some good people who went for jobs and they didn't get the job, and the person who got the job 
I'm sorry, has failed abysmally. And it's mm. simply because they fitted our diversity criteria. 